Hello everyone and welcome to what I believe is the last Director of Music's Notes for Trinity Term 2020, a term like no other. A few notices before we talk about music. We have people leaving the choir, I'm not going to name them here, um, and uh, it's a poignant time for them to be leaving in such unsettled circumstances. So I want to pay particular tribute to them at this time. We're doing all we can to give you a decent velete, and indeed when we possibly can we'll pull you back for a proper party. Now on Sunday on the stream you will be hearing music by Mozart, you'll be hearing the Spätzenmesser in a previous re liturgical recording by our choir. It's called the Spätzenmesser because you can hear the chirruping of the sparrow at the beginning of the Osanna in the Sanctus and Benedictus and at the beginning of the Dona Nobis Pacem. A lot of people struggle with Mozart's and Haydn's masses as liturgical items because of what I mentioned at the beginning of term, to do with the fact that it's a different engagement, it's a different piece of emotional investment that the singers have to make in the music. If you were playing a Mozart piano concerto or you were singing in a Mozart opera, and I'll come back to that in a moment, you would have time in your practice and in your production rehearsals and in your coachings to invest emotionally in the music over a long period of time. This doesn't happen uh, very often in liturgical choirs for the simple reason that uh, often things are rehearsed you know, on the day or within two days of performance. There just isn't the time to do it. But when we take our music on tour, maybe we do concerts, We'll do five concerts of the same programme. And you find people investing emotionally in the music more and more on each performance. And with Mozart's masses, this is entirely necessary. Let's take, for example, the Benedictus of the Schwarzenmesser. The soprano part is a typical opera-like um, aria, but then the alto, tenor and bass parts are like backing. So if you can imagine this in a stage situation, you'll have a soprano at the front of the stage communicating her innermost thoughts to the audience, and then three, the alto, tenor and bass, may be leaning against a pillar, at the, uh, singing the little chords underneath in an entirely different dramatic uh, stance. These are the things we need to think about when we're performing Mozart's masses. They're not part of our normal emotional engagement. Then, at the priest's communion in the stream, in the Sung Eucharist, you will be hearing Keeble College Choir offering its first item under my direction, its first liturgical item. This is a wee uh, tantum ergo that I wrote myself. Um, it's not intended to set the world on fire as a piece of global compositional statement. It's just there to help people say their prayers. I hope you enjoy that. Uh, people have been kind enough to say they like the talks. Um, and I will be back with these talks on the Sunday at the beginning of first week in October. Deo volente. Goodbye.